In this video, we're going to take a look at Bitwig and we're going to do a really nice twist on that Fortet style sample flipping. And uh, this adds a real new dimension to it. I'm really excited about it actually. So let's dive into the demonstration. I'm going to basically just show you that I've got here a drum machine set up. This is a very simple beat. I'm going to play it for you. I've got an empty instrument track here ready to load something up and I'm going to start off by clicking on the plus sign here to load up a sampler and I've got a sample pre-prepared here but it's basically the whole track Michael Jackson she's out of my life so I'm going to drag this on and you can see here that we can basically get in there we can adjust the zoom level move around here through the waveform I'm going to pick up the sample start point and this is ready to be triggered but I haven't got anything triggering it at the moment and what I'm going to do is just double click to set up a clip and I'm going to come up to C3 just going to double click here I'm going to push the F button it's going to fold everything down and only show me the notes where I'm triggering so it just makes it nice and tidy and so this is triggering literally on every single beat let's have a listen and uh, see how that sounds It's a little bit quiet and that's because if you take a look at the waveform we're basically sitting at a point when the actual volume is quiet so I'm just going to increase this but to compensate for the fact that the level is going to be all over the place what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a compressor and uh, let me just firstly let me just go to view here we go to full screen let's get the maximum real estate here and um, what I want to do, like I said, is add a compressor. So we're going to just click on here, go to compressor. And I'm going to set the ratio reasonably high. And um, let me go here to about four to one. And what I'm going to do is make it pretty fast. And uh, the release, uh, I'm going to just going to fine, fine tune that in a minute, actually. I think, you know, my gut feeling is it's pretty fast. Um, but then again, it all depends on what's going through it. So let me just take that a bit longer for the moment. So let's have a listen. Makeup gain on. And let me just show you firstly what we're going to do is just see how that compressor is behaving with the different levels. I'm just going to bring that threshold down just a touch more. And what's going to happen is, is that's going to bring the volume down. You can see that here, the blue gain reduction. Real nice, consistent levels. I mean, this is wicked already, but you know, we're going to take it up a notch in terms of possibilities. I'm going to bring the threshold down. Okay, you know what also I'm going to do is I'm going to add the delay. So on this track, we've got the ability to feed into a return channel. I want to do that on the actual stabs. So this is filling in the gaps. Here's my delay. This is delay two, and you can see the grid sizes here in terms of delay times. Tempo synchronized, filling in the gaps. That's working so nicely. Just playing around. You know what? You know, I've done these videos where I was emulating that style of sample flipping like Fortet. Um, you know, one of the things about that is you have to kind of sit and play around and see what happens and you know sometimes it can take a while you know so I was looking for something that would speed up the process of getting these really kind of improvised uh, new sections in and so I started thinking about the unique capabilities of Bitwig and this whole complex kind of modulation system that's built in you see these LFOs over here LFO 1 and 2 now I was thinking to myself well what if I drop this down into a tempo synchronized LFO and if I set this to maybe, um, let's go over here. So something like, uh, you know, two bars basically occurring in terms of the cycle. And what if I mapped the LFO onto the sample start? All right, so this is where it gets really interesting. Let me just come back and uh, show you again. Have a listen. This is triggering 
the sample from the sample start point at the moment. Let me remind you of the MIDI triggers. All right, so literally a short note being triggered. That corresponds to what we're hearing at the moment. This is from the single position here, the start position defined by this. I can adjust that. But what I want to do is start here. And then I want to adjust the sample start position through the LFO. Okay, so this is the magic. I'm not going to be moving this at the moment, but I'm going to create variety in what we're hearing at those MIDI note triggers. I'm going to click on the LFO here. It's ready now. You can see all of the parameters that potentially we can connect to are illuminated in blue. I'm going to increase this. Listen to that, man. Just unbelievable. I'm going to reduce the distance that it's traveling. So you've got a little range parameter here. So I can click and drag upwards. And it takes it later on in the track. The LFO over here is determining what's happening in terms of where that sample start position is. Now, let me just show you. I'm going to zoom out a bit. We don't get to see it, but let me just show you roughly what's going on here. The sample start position is moving, staying down here, and then going up and down again. So, this is really interesting, all right? So, that's mapped. Let me take the LFO off here. But when I say take the LFO off, I'm actually taking the mapping off in terms of mapping that LFO to a parameter. So it's actually, it's working now, it's all set. You can see the range here on this sample start indicator. So it's triggering it later. Now let me move this in real time. Now what I wanna do is make it a bit more interesting. I'm going to increase the release here. I'm going to make it mono. So there can't be any overlaps. It's a monophonic sampler now. So what's happening is, is it's taking my start position here and then adjusting it later according to the depth of that modulation. Maybe I need to go a bit higher. getting some really interesting textures out of this. You know, I wouldn't have got this if I was sit sitting there manually dragging it over. Maybe release is just a bit too long. But why don't I do something else, right? Why don't I just take this LFO2 and then get that adjusting the release? Now, at the moment, this is synchronized according to the rate specified here. I'm going to take that and we're going to do something different with it again. So I'm just going to get it to a similar cycle. You hear that? Try somewhere else with the start position. Let me just reduce the distance that release is traveling. It's got that Todd Edwards kind of vibe to it, you know? Let me just bring it up a bit. Now, 
this is all well and good, um, but it requires my input here. And so what I'm going to suggest is actually, um, in terms of grabbing these so that we could do something with it, you know, maybe make a structure out of it, what I'm going to do is create an audio track and I'm going to set the input here to the actual channel here. So we've got here pre-fader or post-fader. So I'm going to do that post-fader. And what I can do is I can select for, for recording here, just click on record and get it going. So it's going to record everything that I do. And it means that I could play around with the start position over here, see what comes out and know that it's going to be captured on this track as audio so that I could go through and arrange that after. So look, let's just dive in. I'm going to get that recording at the moment. You can see it now, which is fantastic. You know, that's what we want for everything to be captured. Let's just zoom in. Let's go on a little journey. See what comes up. Whilst this is going on, I might as well mention that if you want this technique to work well, it's a good idea to pick a ballad. That's why I picked this. I didn't want to have all that kind of rhythmic drum and bass elements going on. So these nice little variations, these are occurring and um, they're occurring because of the modulation to the sample start position. And to be honest with you, if I sat down and cut up all of those elements, I would never have come up with this stuff. This is totally unique because of the technique. It's amazing what comes up. So that's the technique. We've captured everything here. Just going to solo this so you can hear it. And of course, we could add the delay again. Now, because it's in isolation with the kick and the other drum elements away, it does sound a little bit clicky on there. So probably what I would suggest to you is to just put a little bit of a fade on the front here. So let's just add that. So um, anyway, look, that's the concept. All right. So it's an amazing, amazing thing here. Um, you know, you can sit there for ages, just vibing around, get yourself a glass of wine or a drink, a beer or something. Just let that run and just experiment, drag that sample start position around. And, you know, loads and loads of interesting stuff is going to come out of it. And you know for sure you've captured everything. Um, so anyway, look, that's it. That's the technique. It's nice. Uh, real interesting vibe. Don't just try it on a ballad. Maybe try it on some sample library keyboard riffs or something where there's a variety in terms of musicality over a period of time. This isn't going to be the technique to use on short loops, really. Um, although you never know, something amazing might come out of it. But, you know, I'm really excited about this. You know, it's all down to this modulation capability here. So you click on one of these and then you can choose a parameter that it's going to modulate. And it's just amazingly flexible.